All right. Hear me, Roy? Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. You already see some cool shit? Okay. Now, um, we are about to scare you a little bit, but uh, a little bit of a disclaimer and a trigger warning. We, uh, we use a lot of stock hacker photos just for kicks, so please enjoy them. First and foremost, thank you to Goldie and Smig. Uh, you guys don't know them, but we do. They helped us out. They're awesome. We would like to say a big thank you to Huawei Pacer team. Thank you guys. It's been a pleasure working with you compared to some other OEMs. Um, these two CVEs have been reported and that is the link for the patch that has been released this morning. If you need a minute to copy it. And we're, I think we're going to do something different this time. We're going to start with a demo. This slide. I'm broke. Yeah, All right. I'm duplicating. Oh, here you go. Whoa. All right. This is going to be ugly. Of VLC. No, oh, there you go. So, what we have here on the table is a tablet, right? No wires running Windows 8.1, standard tablet. The only difference is this one has 4G LTE enabled. Now, to show you that, right, T-Mobile, we're all good. It's fine. Now, I have a server in Amazon EC2 that I'm going to connect to. And I'm going to start listening. In the meantime, I'm going to reboot the tablet. Just to be clear, it's only LTE right now, no Wi Fi. If you're on proof, just ask if you didn't see that. I'm going to reboot the tablet real quick. Now watch the left side of the screen and the tablet restarting. Time for awkward silence. If you guys have any questions, this is DEF CON, all right? Feel free to interrupt, shout, yell, curse. Yes? So, uh, uh, so left side is your uh, EC2 instance? Yes. Disconnected. This externally on the internet. Okay. Okay. Sure. This is externally on the internet. What? <laughs> um. No. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat the question. 
Why is the tablet so slow? Can I do this with iPhones? No. <laughs> Here we go. So wait for it. Let's keep getting it alive, letting it ping Google. Uh, what you see on the left side is a reverse shell coming from the internal LTE module. This isn't the fun part yet. Wait, wait, wait. This isn't the fun part yet. I told you I'm going to scare you. You just got to wait for the tablet. Yes. So the dock, it just happened right, so the tablet is docked on your uh, server, right? Is that yeah. right? So Not the tablet, the internal LTE module inside the tablet just connected back to my server. We, we apparently have this no code running. This is an emergency device. Well, we, we have no code running within the tablet. Wait, hold on, take a mic. So we have no code running within the tablet, the host OS, but we have uh, compromised the firmware of the of just the LTE modem at this point. So other than that, the tablet is pristine. Oh, it's a starting point. Malware compromises LTE module. Yeah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Should. <laughs> All right. So we got the tablet up. Now. What I'm going to do from remote is I'm going to get a malicious CD image from our trusted server. And I'm going to run a script now. Keep your eye on the tablet. Please work. <laughs> I, I am. <laughs> well, this is a problem with the demo. <laughs> Windows, Windows has this thing, they need to refresh their devices. Let's do this again. Hacking in progress. <laughs> All right. Wait for the printers. Here we go. Anyone can think of a problem with this demo? Yeah. Uh, speak up or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Say that again. I didn't do nothing on a tablet except for running a firmware update. So that's what you're doing in front of us just now. What I'm doing in front of you is I am telling the internal module to display a CD ROM with a custom image to the host platform. The device manager refresh. Oh, the device manager refresh. This is something odd with Windows that we've noticed. It's we have to tell it to. Uh, Sometimes, not always, we have to tell it to refresh and rescan devices for no apparent reason. They just need some sort of interrupt it doesn't get. Technically, yes. But we'll get to that. 
So anyone else can think of another problem with this demo? Come on, y'all hackers. Auto run. Who said that? <laughs> oh, okay. He knows the talk. You all fail. All right. Auto run is enabled, which is not enabled by default in Windows. We cheated. But, shit. This is the part where I scare you. I'm going to go into BIOS. Opening a command prompt, shutting down into options. This is going to be fast. So I'm going to go to troubleshoot, advanced options, UEFI firmware settings. And now the tablet restarts and will appear in uh, the old BIOS window. <laughs> there are ways around that. If you shut the screen off the tablet, you think it's asleep, still awake. You go to bed, I do this 2 a.m., you would never know. All right, so what happens now is everything power cycles. So the module itself is restarting and it's trying to reacquire 4G LTE signal and connect back again to me in my Amazon system. Now we wait. Any other questions? Yes. How much room do I have to drop a file on the module? 60 megs? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. PowerShell? What? How much room do I have on the module to drop a file? 60 megs. We can load a mini Linux image. Oh, here we go. So. You want the other uh, USB composite? Yeah. Good thing I have this guy. <laughs> so I'm loading another, uh, I'm telling the module to display another USB composition to the host. Now when that's done, I'm going to run this script and this goes into, you can't see it really clearly, clearly but it goes to secure boot and disables it. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Lurk. <laughs> right, we'll get to that. That's why we start with a demo. <laughs> what? He is the, I got to a question, uh, the keyboard driver? Are you emulating a keyboard driver? Are we emulating a keyboard driver? Yeah. Yes, we are, I, we are emulating a USB hit device. This is a live demo, keep in mind in the video it's way shorter. You essentially, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but what we have is a uh, remote across the internet USB mouse, keyboard, and mass storage device. Someone scared? <laughs> what? Who said? Someone asked the question? Which tablet does this affect? It, it, it is, this is not any problem with the tablet itself. It's a, we're, we're going to go into that. So to scare you a little bit more, this has nothing to do with specific platforms. This will work on any machine that has an M2 slot. An M2 slot. We will get to that too. Live demos are so boring. Has anyone from the NSA tried to take me to dinner? Has anyone from the NSA tried to take me to dinner? <laughs> Maybe. 
<laughs> no, I don't know anyone from the NSA. So. Do you want to do you want to ping Google first to the uh, plane thing? Yeah. So while this tablet's booting, I'm going to have the module ping Google. So the module itself is pinging Google. It will keep pinging Google. Well, bu Bubbles is up. Hold on. Now, here's another scary thing. I'm going to put this in airplane mode. Watch the ping. It's time for that tradition. <laughs> Is it? Yes. All right. So give me one second. I need to finish this demo. <laughs> um, so now what I'm doing is I'm uh, disabling my auto connect back script and I'm rebooting the module. The module is, uh, you brought your own. The module is restarting and if you would look to the right, the right side, right this, there. Takes a while. We have normal LTE connection, just normal. Oh, DEF CON's canceled, by the way. Uh, no. How do you get the well, you got to wait for the talk itself. We started with a demo. <laughs> All right. So there is this tradition at DEF CON where the goons come and they tell the speakers to take a shot. I've, this is my third time speaking at DEF CON, Jesse's second. And we never took a shot. So we said, this time we're going to let the goons take a shot. So any goons in the room walk in here now. <laughs> You're wearing a red shirt. Are you a goon? So, yeah. No. So, wait, wait, hold on a second. So actual goons are not allowed to take a shot. Okay. We got special dispensation for the speaker goons, so we're allowed to do it. These guys actually are not allowed to drink while they're on duty. So I'd love to give them all a shot, but, yeah, we're not allowed to do that. <laughs> I came ready. <laughs> So anyway, so uh, so first of all, don't don't drink yet. So this is for our new speakers, right? So we're gonna do a shot to them. I also want to take a shot for our new attendees. So thank you guys. It's all about you. So cheers to everyone. Cheers. <laughs> Now you have to take another one. Yeah. Oh, right. Now I'm going to do so. another one because we fucked up and we didn't give them their first shot. Exactly. Brought <laughs> <laughs> mine. He, yeah. <laughs> he has a special stash. We got to do this. <laughs> you got to do this. Oh, you want to? You want to do it, Scout? I'm totally up for this. All right. <laughs> you should pour it because I'm not uh, in a state to pour it now. <laughs> If anyone else wants to do a shot, this is the time to come up here. Yeah. All right. Not, through here, through here, not the stage. We can't pour for other people. Can we? So, okay, you guys can pour yourselves. Leave some for me. <laughs> All right, that's enough. That's enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't we, go crazy. Yeah, don't bit. drink. I want you guys to come on stage, though, also. Right. Yeah. Well, you get the fireball. Hold on. Oh shit. <laughs> this is this was like a technical talk that turned into a drinking party. <laughs> shit. Come on, I want you guys to come up on the stage that way we do it. Uh, so this is because we didn't shoot them the first time. <laughs> yes, this is revenge, people. Right. This is the revenge shot. Yeah. You have to pour yourself. Is there any more fireball left? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, to use that. 
All right, so these One guys, second. These guys represent oh, all of you. <laughs> no, 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 use a cup. Shut up! These guys represent all of you. So as soon as she gets ready, okay, to DEF CON. To DEF CON! Now we can start the presentation. <laughs> right, everybody get out. Thank you. Thank you. So, last one. What did we just see except the drinking? <laughs> so, awesome. Thanks a lot. <laughs> First of all, to the tablet question guy, this is not a Dell problem. <laughs> I want to be a completely certain. This is not a Dell problem. This is not a any other OEM problem. It doesn't have to do with what device you're using. The problem we are going to describe is a simple firmware update vulnerability for an internal module. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, Adam Caudill, Brandon Wilson, if any one of you is in here by any chance, no? These guys, remember, never forget actually, secure firmware updates. If you guys remember bad USB, everyone remembers bad USB. It was a cool thing in the media. Essentially, it's a bad way of doing firmware updates. There was no security there. The problem is across many platforms, many devices, and we want to we want to show this as a not specific product, specific vendor, specific something. This is a a cross the market problem. All right, so hi, I'm Laplinker. That's Jesse. He's awesome. He also talks, but he'll do it later. Occasionally. Occasionally. So we're talking about an internal 3G, 4G LTE module that mm, people use in their tablets, laptops, two-in-ones, portables, ultrabooks, you name the form factor. If it has the right connector in it, you can put the module in. Put it in, put in a SIM card, you're good to go. It's as simple as that. Now, what are these business class devices? You see them all around, uh, mainly in big corporations. Uh, the, the reason we mentioned business class devices is because it's easier to get with supported LTE or 4G connectivity. Some of these are, are sold as an LTE computer, LTE laptop. Any one of you happen to have an LTE in your laptop or tablet or device? Raise your hands, raise your hands. Yeah, higher, higher, don't worry. Talk to Charlie Miller. <laughs> what about hotspots? <laughs> Good question. Same problem. Yeah. Okay. This one. Okay. So, um, how are these cards or modules plugged into your laptop? or tablet or whatever. We have this, you've, you've heard me say it before, it's called an M2 connector. Uh, what you see is a picture of one and the key. Yeah, so it, it's, it's basically the replacement for a mini PCI cards, so it's basically a smaller form factor and everything is using this new M2 slot. If you have a, a device and you have a mini PCIe card and you open it up, you open your new laptop and you want to put the card in and it doesn't fit but it looks the same connector, that's it. This thing has uh, these protocols passing over it. Right, two PCIe buses, one SATA bus, USB, audio, PCM, IUM, etc., etc. USB, yes, hell yes. This thing goes with USB 3.0 as well. And I don't need to tell you USB 3 is fast as hell. So you can do a lot of bad things fast. So why did we choose to go with this device anyway? Like we could have chosen anything else. Um, any any internal device would work. But the the point is the point is not the device here, people. The point is this is a platform insider threat. 
this is a independent device inside your machine. This is how they look. Um, these modules are available worldwide. Obviously, you can get them on eBay for 50 bucks. Yes. Okay, some organizations use these devices, this 4G LTE, to backhaul data over firewalls. Yeah, we could totally do that. Uh, can you write it, write it down? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyone else getting more scared? <laughs> um, and and we can do it with airplane mode turned on. Yeah, airplane mode. Yeah. Don't matter to us. <laughs> um... Yeah. I have no idea. Do you have an ATM to give me? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any other questions? Interruptions, comments, random remarks, screams, nothing? This is DEF CON. Yeah, so, so this particular di device was fun also just because it has the LTE connection so that we can do stuff over the internet like this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> These come in PCIe as well. No, 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 PCI is, uh, oh, PCI compliance. Yeah. Oh, oh, I don't do that. <laughs> See, as a hardware guy, PCI compliance doesn't really talk to me. <laughs> you had a question? How is this powered with the internal platform power? So if the system, it, that depends per platform, right? So some, some devices will have a direct link to the battery for this thing, so when you uh, come out from sleep, it will be already powered out and connected. So technically you can have a consistent connection across reboots. Most of them will power cycle everything. That's what we saw in the demo when we had to power cycle. And we had to wait for a connect back. Any other questions? Yes. This is not an iPhone, though. What? Oh, that will be December 2018. <laughs> <laughs> Any other question? How the hell are we going to fix this? This has already been fixed. In this module, specifically. Let's talk about the broader, bigger picture in a second. Um, now, just a reminder, this has been fixed. The patch has been released today, thanks to Huawei. Again, awesome way of communication with them. I have, I have not expected that, but it was uh, um, very responsive, very pleasant communication over months. Kudos. Now, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, about the hack itself. How are we about time? Oh, shit. Uh, you want to help me? Yeah. Okay. So we have this, um, we, as we said at the beginning, the, the entry point is malware um, running a software update for the module, or a user is running a malicious update. The update utility we have for this specific module um, is running on Windows. The firmware is packed in the software utility. Yeah, b basically <laughs> when we got started looking at the, the firmware update utility, we started looking around and some obvious things, we, we spotted sp some things like a Linux string, so it looked interesting and we searched for just root colon and found an Etsy password file with a hard-coded uh, DES password. Uh, we were able to crack that in about four hours on a GPU cluster and get the root password for the, the device image. And uh, we wanted to take a closer look at the hardware itself. So Yeah, we were looking at it. Okay, we got a root username and password. Yeah. This is, for all you Unix people, this is how you grew up in Windows. <laughs> <laughs> so we're looking at this thing. It's tiniest, this big. And um, 
what are we going to do? We're hardware people. Let's look at the test pads, right? So, obligatory. <laughs> Stock hacker photo, by the way. John Travolta is for uh, reference. We start with this. And then we go, okay, we accidentally bricked it. Well, so th this was originally we connected, we, we uh, probed each of the test points and found uh, the UART connection. So uh, two of those uh, wires are soldered to uh, RX and TX. There's another wire soldered to a reset and then one wire soldered to ground. And we, we were able to do this for a couple modules, but do, do you know how many we've gone through now? <laughs> we bricked about four. <laughs> oh, six. Okay, yeah. Six. And just this, this was kind of cumbersome to try and like solder new wires and especially like removing it and inserting it again to try it out to get access to this UART. So we basically, Mickey uh, came up with a, a much better solution. Uh, yeah. We, we, we found this dev kit that, that has the M2 slot. It breaks out everything, the SIM card, the USB in it. And we thought, how do we access the pins in a way that um, we don't have to solder every time? Because we soldered for like... Two or three hours is a process of getting this fixed and ready and soldered because these test, point, these test pads are tiny. And then you end up breaking the thing in three minutes. And you're like, shit. So we came up with a more uh, agile solution to break things. And that's that. Drilling a hole through the, through the dev kit and using pogo pins. As you can see, the right side, the, Mac, the, the MacGyverness of it, um, this is duct tape over pogo pins with hot glue. <laughs> and we got Ruchel. <laughs> Yay. That's not exciting. I know. After all we've seen, we have to do a happy shell dance. <laughs> and we have to do an obligatory success meeting. Let's recap. We have a root shell on a Linux powered independent device inside your platform without any way of you controlling it, other than opening up and taking it out. <laughs> Jesse? <laughs> As you can see, the firmware structure is awesome. So yeah, so we, we like the, the initial hack basically enabled to get, it, get us access onto the device and it let us start looking around required physical access to the UART test pins but we wanted to, to go further than that, and we spent some more time looking at the firmware update mechanism, doing some re reversing there, and figured out how, it be, basically, as, as part of that, and like doing some changes, and like trying to, to flash an update, we discovered that uh, it actually was really only doing a CRC instead of a, like an actual secure firmware update. Yeah. Well. I, I was going to talk about the, uh, so the, the, we, we spent some time reversing the firmware structure and, under, and figured out that there was a, basically a, a CRC covering each header block and then the different data blocks within the file had their own CRC. And we were originally going to write some tool to recalculate all those, but then we figured out that it was much easier to basically patch the updater to do the work for us. So when, when you first run the updater, it has this, this firmware image as part of the updater, and it'll go through, check the CRC, make sure that everything still works, and then it'll pass it over to the modem. So all we did was just change all the checks to instead of doing like a, a compare and a branch if not equal, to just replace, basically recalculate the CRC and replace it in the firmware image before it passes it along to the modem where the modem does its own CRC check. So for, in order to do complete arbitrary firmware updates, we only needed to change six opcodes in the firmware, in the firmware upgrade, update utility, not including like patching out for NOPs for like the, the branch opcodes, but there, there weren't that many changes at all in order to get this working. So uh, it works great, it's easy to do. So, so yeah, they, they basically are not doing any kind of secure update. And uh, because of this, we're able to recalculate the CRC. And this, this has a complete uh, Android kernel running inside the modem with an Android USB gadget. So we can, ba we basically created a, a live uh, a kernel module in order to live patch and enable 
hid support within the Android USB gadget, and then we can reconfigure it however we want as far as like uh, network devices or hid devices. We can have it do mouse and, and keyboard, have it be a CD-ROM drive, all kinds of stuff. Whatever you want, you can you can you can have it uh, USB Ethernet and bridge the connection, sniff all the traffic. And one one point to to remember about this is that al- although it requires uh, malware originally pushing the the firmware update, we can use that module as a, a route of uh, persistence for malware. So you can completely wipe the OS after it's been compromised, and then reinject from the module. And when you're doing the firmware update, it basically asks the the firmware update basically asks the module to switch into this update mode. So if the module ignores that request, it's it's difficult to to actually guarantee that you've ever actually cleaned the module after something like this has happened. So it's it's kind of a, an interesting problem to run into. We keep saying module, but the, the modem, <laughs> the modem module. Um, whatever this is, this is a, an example, right? We can do the, this is theoretically possible with many other platform devices, platform components. This, the risk here, what we're trying to say is there is a platform risk. And this is like the worst case scenario where malware can persist across wipeouts, right? If you have remote USB HID and, and storage device, you can do whatever you want. I can install a new OS remotely without you knowing it. All right. Let's sum things up. You got a cool demo, right? Uh, there is such a thing as an insider threat, and literally. And if any one of you is involved with firmware updates, secure it very well. Yeah. And so, 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 so basically, uh, b- because... Th- th- it, all, all of these different devices in your platform have the secure update functionality, or should have a secure update functionality. And a lot of people think that, or used to think that USB was safe, but uh, b- because we have this arbitrary code execution ability in some place that's not viewable by like antivirus software running on the host system, like and your, your AV or anything like that won't have the ability to look inside the module unless the module gives it that capability by answering back to requests. So if, like, multiple different places within the, within the platform, you'll have similar uh, execution environments where you could have malware doing a similar type of attack like this. And we just want to let people know that secure update through all of these different forms is, is really important. And that means more than just a CRC check. So do signature updates or signature verification and do it right. <laughs> Before we go to questions, um, we're just going to run the video demo for uh, the YouTube talk so anyone who's watching it could have a high res. If that's okay with y'all. Uh, all right, so here, all we see here is the tablet on the right. Oh, shit. <laughs> My bad. All right. We got the tablet on the right. We got the, the remote connection. This is a shell on a server on EC2. So powering on the tablet. This one's going to be faster, I promise. <laughs> We're listening on the port and waiting for the connect back. You can see the GoPro light flashing fast when you go by. <laughs> And we got to connect back. Again, okay, connecting to our totally legit server, downloading a, downloading a malicious CD ROM image. This is when we did not have to do a device refresh. <laughs> So we load a CD-ROM device first, and then we load the image, emulating a CD getting in the drive. <laughs> then the hacking is in progress. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, I, I think just rem- remembering that we can all do this when airplane and mode is enabled is is interesting also and has some interesting ramifications. You say interesting, I say scary. <laughs> tomato, okay. tomato. It's scary. It's scary. So this was in case we failed with a live demo. <laughs> this is where we enable the USB HID, go into UEFI. Skip forward a little bit. So we load the configuration remotely. We tell it to disable secure boot. The script is just a shortening for all the keystrokes. Goes, disables it. Reboot. The, tablet, the module is pinging Google. Again, we're going to do the refresh. You see it's in air, airplane mode. It's on. And then we restart its normal <coughs> operations, and you can see the LTE module to the right. And it's uh, with internet. Right. So now we have time for questions. And I have a microphone. Yeah, microphone be good. <laughs> All right, Hi. microphone. I have uh, two questions. Uh, first, did you okay. ah. did you patch the firmware to to keep the airplane mode the, the module activated with the airplane mode, or is it always like that? No, in this case, it was always like that. Okay. Uh, could you use uh, um, the the PCI Express to gain access to the host's memory via the module? Technically, yes, if well, you have a PCI Express module. Well, th this, this particular card uh, does not have the, the PCI Express lines connected in the, the M2 yeah. slot. Monkey. Yeah, question to the left. So you said this has been patched now? Yes. Did they actually patch it so the module itself does verification, or did they just patch the Windows installer so that the Windows firmware updater does verification? Uh, so there's two steps of verification here. One is the module double checking, and then, and sorry, now one is the software double checking, and one is the module itself performs secure boot. So um, the module itself is performing the check. So now you won't be able to load any unauthorized image to this module. Yeah. Hi. So um, one of the bullet points was to have uh, more security around the security updates for the firmware. Yeah. So I'm curious, like, how would you propose making it more secure, making a password more uh, tough to crack? or? Well, I, I would recommend uh, like a full like RSA signature verification where you, the, the company keeps the private key and distributes the public key on the device and hopefully it's a big enough key that's Im impractical to crack. Yep. So uh, how would you attack this? Would you maybe spoof the DNS to, of the update server or? No, no. We just um, give you a link. You have an update for your module. That's it. In this specific case, it varies per device. Any other questions? We actually got to clear you guys off. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Cool. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>